House Democrats unveiled the text of their impeachment resolution today and called for the removal of President Trump through the 25th Amendment. Meanwhile, the Republicans who incited a violent insurrection to overthrow the government responded by telling everyone it was time to move on. For more on this, it's time for a closer look. The sitting president of the United States is the leader of a violent insurrectionist movement who incited a seditious mob of right-wing terrorists to ransack the Capitol and overthrow American democracy. And every day that he remains in office, he's a threat to continue inciting violence and breaking the law, including possibly pardoning himself and others. Impeachment and removal are the bare minimum we should expect from our elected leaders. And today, House Democrats began that process only to be blocked by Republicans. Today, House Democrats tried to pass a resolution by unanimous consent calling for Vice President Mike Pence to invoke the 25th Amendment. Republicans objected, so it failed. In response, Democrats have now introduced one article of impeachment against the president for inciting insurrection. A vote could come as soon as Wednesday. A source close to Vice President Pence tells CNN that he has not ruled out potentially invoking the 25th Amendment, but there is some concern on his team about what President Trump could do, perhaps even worse, should they start moving on this. I'm sorry, you're afraid of what else Trump could do? He already incited a violent mob to attack the U.S. Capitol. If that's not cause for removal, what is? Are you going to wait until he shows up in the fur Viking hat so we can all... Listen to Ted Cruz pretend to condemn it. The president and I often don't see eye to eye when it comes to sartorial choice, but it's just a Viking hat. He's not carrying a Confederate flag, and I, I notice now on the TV in my office that he does have a Confederate flag, but it's not like he's waving it around proudly. Oh, well, there he goes with the waving. Oh, you rarely see him do anything with that much gusto. Also, why are we waiting for Pence to act? He spent four years by this president's side as he's repeatedly excused or incited violence and sowed the destruction of our democracy. I feel like we're a group of school children at the zoo waiting for the sloth to do something. He's not gonna do anything. Let's go see the polar bear. Why are we giving him 24 hours? There's nothing in the constitution that says before you impeach the president, you have to give him a 24 hour head start. This isn't hide and seek. Although if it was, I'm betting it would be pretty easy to find Trump. He would. Definitely hide in the hamper and then yell, don't look at the hamper, you should try the basement, many people are saying it. In fact, the last time Congress impeached a deranged white supremacist who incited violence against his political enemies, Andrew Johnson, they actually did it before they wrote up formal articles of impeachment. There's nothing in the Constitution that says you can't do it again. I'm pretty sure you could hold a vote on a bar napkin that says get the f out. There's no reason to wait for Mike Pence to do anything. In fact, Chuck Schumer and Nancy Pelosi tried calling him last week to beg him to remove Trump through the 25th Amendment, and he wouldn't even come to the phone. Speaker Pelosi and I tried to call the vice president this morning to tell him to do this. We, they kept us on hold for 25 minutes and then said the vice president wouldn't come on the phone. We were kept on the line for 20 minutes. He was going to be here in a minute, a minute, a minute. Well, he never did They come kept to you the on phone. hold for 20 minutes? At least. The Speaker of the House and incoming Senate Majority Leader called the Vice President to beg him to immediately remove from office the President who's an urgent threat to national security, and he put him on hold like they were calling Verizon customer service. Can you imagine that call? In a few words, tell us what you're calling about. Yeah, the 25th Amendment? I heard. Upgrade my internet. Is that correct? No, I said the 25th Amendment? I heard. Add the Platinum Movie Package with Stars in Cinemax on demand for $9.99 a month. Is that correct? No, so I'm calling about removing a president who incited a violent insurrection from office. I heard. Stream episodes of The Office on Peacock. Is that correct? No, and I don't appreciate the unauthorized in-house advertising. I have Premium Plus. All the content, none of the ads. This is an urgent matter in national security and the bare minimum for the preservation of our crumbling democracy. Today, the FBI warned of more possible violence across the country and the National Park Service closed the Washington Monument for two weeks due to credible threats to disrupt Joe Biden's inauguration. And yet today, Republicans blocked the Democrats' resolution calling for the removal of Trump and for the most part have come out against impeachment. And with only a few exceptions, the Republican Party is nearly unanimous in its belief that even in the aftermath of a deadly insurrection incited by the president and with more threats on the horizon, we should all just move on and let the man who incited a terrorist attack on the U.S. Capitol walk away consequence-free.
House Republican leader Kevin McCarthy today said, quote, impeaching the president with just 12 days left in his term will only divide our country more. You've Senator Lindsey Graham, who on the other foot is against impeachment, he says that's going to do more harm than good. My personal view is uh, that the president touched the hot stove on Wednesday and is unlikely to touch it again. Roy, allow me to be blunt, you're a moron. Donald Trump doesn't learn lessons. He famously paid someone else to learn lessons so we could get into college. And no one loves touching hot stoves more than Donald Trump. He touches them with his entire face. I can't believe, and yet, of course, I can believe that these ghouls are hanging on to the he learned his lesson myth. Susan Collins said the same thing during the last impeachment, and famously, that worked out great. Forget learning his lesson. This guy needs to be tried for sedition and jailed and strapped to a gurney like Steve Buscemi and Con Air. And we're not just learning about future threats with every day that passes. We're also learning about just how violent and menacing and deadly and heinous the riot really was and how much worse it could have been. A Capitol Police officer told BuzzFeed that was a heavily trained group of militia terrorists that attacked us. And all the while, the president was watching it and encouraging it and enjoying it to multiple accounts. And so if you're a public figure in any capacity, but especially someone who was complicit in building or encouraging this violent insurrectionist movement that nearly toppled the United States government, the most important thing for you to be focused on right now, obviously, obviously, is how many followers you have on Twitter. For conservatives, there's suddenly a lot of complaints that they are losing, uh, abruptly losing a dramatic amount of followers. For example, Tom Fitton of Judicial Watch says he's lost 22,000 followers. Uh, our colleague at Fox, Brian Kilmeade, lost 30,000 followers in four hours. Other high profile Republicans are upset they're losing followers online after Twitter cracked down on accounts that spread QAnon conspiracy theories. Friday or Thursday, I was at a million followers on Twitter. Um, I had one million followers on Twitter just a couple of days ago, and now I'm down to 922,000. I lost, over the weekend, 55,000 Twitter followers. Oh, my God. You lost followers on Twitter? Someone called 911. Scratch that. Call 911 for special emergencies, a.k.a. 911 Premium Plus. I know I ask this a lot, but uh, what the f is wrong with you people? A violent mob of seditionists stormed the Capitol in an attempt to overthrow democracy. People died, and you're whining about losing followers on Twitter? They also took away all my gold bars on Candy Crush. You know how hard it is to beat the Jelly Queen and Cupcake Carl? Thanks a lot, Big Tech. If a mob of violent terrorists lays siege to the Capitol and threatens to return, your biggest concern is the number of Twitter followers you lost. You're a sociopath. And that's not just me saying that. I'm pretty sure that's in the DSM. Who monitors... Their Twitter follower count that closely anyway. The only thing more sociopathic than complaining about lost Twitter followers is bragging about gained Twitter followers. Pretty good week. Added a buck 20. I had some pretty sweet cat content. Also, and this is just a tip for the future, if Twitter announces that they're banning Nazis and insurrectionists and crazy conspiracy theory nutjobs, maybe don't complain at the exact same time that you're losing Twitter followers. That doesn't sound quite as sympathetic as you think it does. Well, 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 the police start rounding up the arsonists and suddenly I lose customers and my store, kerosene, and matches are us. And if you thought I couldn't get any more nauseating and self-serving than that, you were wrong. Because when they weren't complaining about losing followers on Twitter, the very same Republicans who spent months spreading monstrous lies about the election, who fed their rabid base a steady diet of unhinged conspiracy theories and fantasies of violent retribution, who incited an insurrectionist riot that breached the Capitol for the first time in 200 years, had the gall to turn around and start calling for unity and healing. The White House uh, just released that statement saying impeachment would, uh, in the White House's words, only serve to further divide the country and that this is a time for healing and unity. Now it is time for America to unite, to come together. We're at an po important point. Um, I'm very concerned about where we're at. I hope I hope we can begin to come back together. We have a chance here to start over. President Trump did the right thing last night in the last 24 hours. Instead of trying to match what President Trump has done, the radical Democrats are talking about another impeachment that will destroy the country even further. We've got to be able to bring volume down. Speaker Pelosi talking about, well, let's impeach the president with one week to go and to try to drive this is trying to drive a wedge further, is trying to make a difficult situation more difficult uh, and right now, we need to turn the rhetoric down, not try to turn the volume up. 
And let me begin by doing my part to begin the healing process, bring down the temperature, and tone down the rhetoric by saying this. Wait, first, can I have some calming music, please? Thank you. Do <laughs> you cretinous insurrectionist gargoyles? Of course you guys want to move on. The kid who himself at prom is the one who always wants to shift the conversation to everyone's summer plans. So, Gary, it happened during the Macarena? It doesn't matter when it happened. Tell me about your internship. You guys incited a violent mob that rampaged across the Capitol trying to overthrow the government, and now you want us to seek unity and healing? I'd call you craven, soulless ghouls, but in the case of these seditionist dip they're more like soul-devouring ghouls. I love a good southern fried soul with a side of peach tea and pecan pie. How can we find unity with people who literally want a confederacy? But when it came to faux self-serving, let's lower the temperature rhetoric, the cake was taken by future former First Lady Melania Trump. First Lady Melania Trump has just released a statement regarding last week's protest. She writes in part, I am disappointed and disheartened with what happened last week. I find it shameful that surrounding these tragic events, there's been salacious gossip, unwarranted personal attacks, and false misleading accusations on me from people who are looking to be relevant and have an agenda. And let me make something clear. Whether you're a Republican or a Democrat, seditionist, or law-abiding citizen, you leave this poor woman alone. And this woman, and this one. Because any one of them could be her. And better safe than sorry, I mean, how dare you, salaciously gossip about this woman after she be best for you. For you. She's bester than any of you. She, rehear she refurbished and rehurbished. That's how best she is. Did them both. Two for one. Saved your money. She refurbished the White House tennis pavilion. For you. It's not for her. You think she has time to play tennis? Between sending messages via jacket and hating Christmas with all her heart? At this point, the only acceptable option and the bare minimum for the preservation of our democracy is the immediate removal and prosecution of Donald Trump for sedition and the expulsion of anyone who aided him in this coup, including the likes of Josh Hawley and Ted Cruz and Alabama Congressman Mo Brooks, who whipped up the mob into a frenzy before it stormed the Capitol. And then after that, we need immediate, far-reaching structural reforms to our democracy. If you're a right-wing pundit, maybe try to summon the same sense of outrage and urgency over losing our democracy that you feel over losing... 55,000 Twitter followers. This has been A Closer Look. God's Love We Deliver cooks and brings over two million meals a year to men, women, and children living with HIV, AIDS, cancer, and other serious illnesses, and they need your help now more than ever. If you're watching this online, you can hit the donate button. Stay safe, wash your hands, wear a mask. We love you.